What's up guys? Support, support, support. That is the best advice I can give to anybody that is currently going through the K-1 visa process. Um, I can only tell you uh, the experience that my wife and I had gone through when my wife had arrived here in the United States. And I'm saying this because I had somebody ask me, you know, what, what was it like for your wife coming into a different country for the first time? Well, actually my wife did actually pretty good, but she did have some uh, problems with uh, loneliness, uh, missing her family, um, missing her friends, and then as time went on, it was the Filipino foods. My wife is a Filipino, and she dropped everything to come here to start a new life with me. And I am forever grateful to have her in my life support that is the number one thing that you must you must be by your partner's side at all times she is or he is your number one and you should be there to support them with whatever it is they're going through uh, i wouldn't be any different if i would would drop my life here in the u.s and come and live in the philippines which by the way is what my plan is at retirement. I do want to retire in the Philippines. Um, for my wife, I guess it was, uh, you know, the family. The family was uh, the number one thing. That was what she struggled with for the longest time. Um, you know, you're in the physical while you're back home, but here you're not. You see your family on video. And that is another thing, y'all. You have to have contact with the family. And by using video is the best way. Don't call by telephone and speak over the phone. You must do the video thing where they can actually see their family and they can see you. Um, you know, my wife had to go through a class before coming here to just kind of give her a general idea of what it might be like when you come in to the United States. Um, and it, it's also there to prepare them for a different culture. Um, I also had to prepare myself. I already knew that this was going to be a very difficult thing um, for her. You know, missing the family, missing your friends, missing your country. And I have to say that my wife actually adjusted pretty darn well. Uh, she still today, it's been four and a half years later, and she still has her struggles with feeling lonely, missing the family. We actually, uh, March of this year, 2017, we were actually in the Philippines visiting with the family. And... We came back in March, and uh, here we are, March, April. Here we are in May, and my wife still finds herself feeling lonely. Um, and most of that time, most of those things usually happen when they're alone. Um, you start thinking about your family, thinking about things back home. Um, these are perfectly normal. These are things that are going to attack. And... Uh, you just have to support whatever it is that she's feeling and understand. Um, it, it, it has to be a very, very hard, very difficult thing to do. Um, also, we have um, experienced uh, racism. People, there, there was particular people here that, that you know, would, would say certain things about my wife. They wouldn't say it to your face, of course, but it was happening. And 
there's not a whole lot you can do here about that. Um, you're free to say whatever you want. As long as she's not being touched in any way, um, they can say whatever they want. You know, it's hard to understand why. First of all, we, we live in a such a judgmental uh, society here in the United States. People are so judgmental on other people. It's unbelievable. Um, but for the most part, uh, it was really just missing the family and um, missing her friends. And then just the, the other little things like, you know, missing the food, things like that. If you are lucky and you have a Filipino restaurant that is nearby or one that you can travel to at a, at a decent, uh, it's, it's not that far. That's awesome. See, here in Pennsylvania, where we're located, we don't have a Filipino restaurant. We have Asian stores where we can find some Filipino uh, items, uh, but, but that's about it. So we try really hard to try to cook our own Filipino food. Um, the other thing uh, is it's a very long process. Um, but in that process, the two of you are spending, or whatever, if you become a family, you have kids, that's great. Um, it's just, it's four and a half years, and my wife and I are just now in the last two final steps of her becoming a citizen here in the United States. And uh, uh, you have your biometrics, and this is after, of course, you receive your 10-year green card. Uh, you'll have your biometrics then you have to we have to wait uh, an additional four months before she can have her interview then I'm not exactly sure how long you have to wait to get sworn in as a citizen but we're just really happy that we got to this point uh, everything for us went very smooth um, the only advice I could give on anybody that's doing this for the first time is it's very, very, very important to make sure that whatever the government asks you for, you have it. Because if you don't have it, um, it's going to set you back. It may set you back for a couple of days or it could set you back for months. And it took my wife going through the first phase of getting the application approved and the physicals and the things that she had to do in the Philippines, the things I had to do on my end, it took, it took approximately 90 days for her to come here to the United States. So uh, that's pretty much it, you all. Uh, just make sure you, you triple check everything to make sure that everything's in line for what they're asking for. As far as the experience, um, it's... To me personally, it's an awesome, awesome experience to bring a different culture into your life, into your family. My family just adores uh, my wife. And I got to tell you, man, I couldn't ask for a better woman. She is the most amazing woman that I, I can't even compare to any other woman because I just can't. She brings with her those Filipino values, like family values, um, just very kind-hearted, very genuine. Uh, that's pretty much how I can explain it. Uh, and and what, what, what person would not want that in their life? Um, I had another, another gentleman say to me, um, you do know that when you especially Filipinos, you bring one into your life, into your family, you'll end up supporting her family. Well, <laughs> everything in life is a choice. That's either you're for doing things to help or you're not. And I'm the type of person that I want to help. Okay, that's my family. Okay, it's not just my wife. They're my family too. And if it means helping by putting food on the table to pay one of their bills, to help them with medical bill, I'm going to do it. Okay? I'm all for it. Uh, it's just the way that it is. If you love her, you should love her family. 
that's just how it is. Uh, we've had the opportunity, uh, I'll give you a good example. I had, I, I'm thinking, okay, my wife is coming here to the United States and I'm thinking, well, I should probably try to find her a Filipino friend. You know, another another Filipino that she could hang with and, and it might make it easier for her being here. Well, I found out that that's not necessarily true. For Filipinos that are here in at least our area, they seem to have lost the culture that's in them, the Filipino culture. They have been Americanized, is how I'm going to put it. Um, it. It almost seems like they have this mentality that they are so much better than you are. Just like most American people here, that is exactly the attitude with people. You're judgmental on other people, and uh, there's just a lot of ignorance in America. That is my opinion. That's how I see it. I deal with a lot of people every single day, and I see so much ignorance in people, it's, it's just unbelievable. But we found that a lot of the Filipino people living here that, that have been here for like maybe 10 years or longer, they seem to have lost that culture that's in them. And um, when they say they're gonna do something, they don't follow through with it. So that really didn't happen with my wife uh, and that's okay because she made some pretty nice friends here um, I actually uh, was introduced to a couple that um, you know this woman she's a Filipino she she married this man and you know she's been here in the United States I can't exactly tell you how long but her husband and I were, were talking and and he basically just came right out to me and said, I will never go back to the Philippines. But why not? And he said, well, because the it's a very poor country and I didn't like the way that people were living. Okay, well, just because you have a $300,000 home doesn't give you the right to judge on how a different culture may live because things aren't the same for them as it is for here. And I'm thinking to myself, what a ignorant thing to say, especially while your wife is standing right there. What an ignorant way to be, a, a very selfish man. Um, he cannot face that sort of thing because he's just not used to that. And which is kind of telling me you obviously don't have a giving heart. You don't really seem to care much about her culture or possibly even her family. <laughs> so those are the sort of things that, that we have dealt with here. And uh, I can honestly tell you that my wife has the opportunity to visit, not visit, I'm sorry, to see her family whenever she possibly can. We, we use Skype. It's everything is video or FaceTime. FaceTime is one of the really the, the you seem to get a better connection with FaceTime. So we use FaceTime to connect with our family, to see them, to talk to them. Um, but once again, it's not the same as actually seeing them in person. But, you know, I'm, I'm forever grateful to have that kind of technology to be able to see her family that's 8,000 miles on the other side of the globe. It's pretty amazing technology. So it's just very important, y'all, to support your loved one. Always be there for him or her, for everything. That is number one, you know, it's number one. That's the best advice I can give. And I'm hoping that whoever's going through this for the first time, or you're in the middle stage or the final last stage, I wish you all the best in the world and, um, Leave me a comment. If you have any questions, shoot me a comment and we'll do whatever we can to try to help you with that. So just keep it real, y'all, and uh, just be happy, happy, happy. I'll talk to you later. Bye.